Welcome back on the AM show. We delve deep now into the parliamentary primaries of the governing new patriotic party. We know that quite a number of bigwigs and those deemed to be establishment candidates lost their way. They will not be returning to parliament. I'm talking about the 28 incumbent bigwigs that lost. But there are others who were also backed by establishment that did not make their way through. We'll look at the wins, the games, the losses, the good, the bad, and the ugly. But joining us for starters for this conversation, we have Suleiman Abraima. He's Executive Director, Media Foundation for West Africa. Mr. Abraima, good morning. Uh, we've not interacted this year. Happy New Year. And where have you been? I've not even seen your shadow in quite a while. Good morning, Ben. Um, um, well, I think it's in order to say Happy New Year, even though the first year of the month is almost um, running out. I, I think I've been around. Um, it's a busy time in West Africa. Um, throughout the week last week, for example, I had to be in Senegal, Dakar, um, to support efforts um, aimed at em empowering the media there to support the upcoming elections in that country. So it's been a busy time for us, but um, we are coping. We thank God uh, for that. Before we get into some very topical matters, we'll be heading to Yendi, we'll be heading to Ewutu, Senya East. Uh, you know exactly why we'll be heading there. But before we go there, what did you make of the MPP's parliamentary primaries on Saturday? The good, the bad, and the ugly. Well, I, I, I think that generally... Um... It's fair to say that it went well. Um, of course, there were issues of concern, such as the, the, the traditional issue of money in our politics. And I mean, even though I was out of town, I was reading about some constituencies where delegates were saying that unless they are paid, they are not going to vote. We had allegations about monies being distributed. We had allegations of television sets being distributed. And sometimes these things make you wonder, what at all do people who seek to go to parliament seek to, to, to gain? We know, we know the salaries of parliamentarians. So beyond the salaries, what is there in parliament that people are really willing to do anything and everything to be able to get to parliament? I think that is, is, is something that as a country, we need to be concerned about. It, it is a of question course, I have asked time without number and even posed to candidates here, even I think as recently as last week. They are never able to give me any concrete answers. They, they say they want to serve the people. I ask them, if you lose uh, with all these sums of money you are spending, I mean, it's, it's clear that there's something, but you and I don't, don't know exactly what, but there's something. Well, absolutely, and I think that uh, to be honest with ourselves, we, we all know the kinds of transactions and, and things that happen in, in Parliament. And that is why we are in the situation that we are in. We, we have both the majority and minority doing compromises here and there. Uh, we have a minority that is almost equal in number in terms of um, the Parliament that we have now, 137, 137, with an independent candidate or uh, an MP making it 138 for the governing party. And yet, we have had a situation where our country has borrowed to, to almost, you know, uh, unimaginable levels. We have minority MPs coming out to always complain. And then you ask yourself, but these loans are approved by the House. I can't re remember the number of times where minorities MPs have said, look, we are boycotting this, or we won't do this, we won't do that. In almost all instances, these are done by the same House. We have cases where um, the president makes appointments that are just a, a no-no in terms of, you know, partisan people being appointed to uh, institutions that are supposed to be independent. And yet you have a bipartisan approval of these people, even as you have the minority or the NDC complaining. So you ask yourself, what has been happening in parliament? If people will come out and complain, and yet they are the same people who make the decisions that get us into worse situations, then of course, something is happening that... Um, must be of concern to all of us. I was hoping that our current Speaker of Parliament would assert his authority in some way to, to be able to get us out of what we all know of Parliament, that sometimes you, you cannot say because they'll say, well, contempt of Parliament, you know, privileges committee, invitation, and so on and so forth. But 
literally we are we are killing and destroying um, our country. I mean, nobody can tell me that they are spending all they are spending because they want to go to parliament and end, is it the 20,000 or 25,000 because they want to serve this country. If they want to serve this country, the money they spend in the primaries can really do well for a lot of, a lot of people. But of course, we also saw that the, saw the tagging in, in some areas. It was quite scandalizing to observe or to see uh, the videos from, from Yendi, for, for example. Um, I don't think that as a country, 30 years of our democracy, we should be experiencing um, some of these things. Of course, I, I, I admired Ajua Safo's uh, courage and determination to go. And I was wondering whether, uh, how she thinks of the people of Domi Kwabenya to put herself up again for, 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 for the elections. And then of course, um, some surprising defeats here, some surprising um, uh, winnings here and there. So generally part of our democracy, but we can absolutely make it better. Right. And uh, I believe in some instances, you would also look at the female casualties because we want war, more women in parliament. I know that is something that you support as well, but we see a lot of them falling by the way. Ursula survived, um, but uh, you look at the likes of Frida Prempe, you look at the likes of Sheila Bartels, you look at the likes of Tina Mensa, among others, all of them succumbing. And uh, it, it doesn't paint... Um, a pretty picture because a lot of these people were succumbing to men as well. Dr. Gideon Boakon in Frida Pempe's constituency. Um, is it um, the lawyer Jerry Ahmed in, in, in Tina Mensa's constituency, Wei Jagbawe, among others. So it makes for interesting reading. But let's come down to something that you are passionate about, media, right? We know that in Yendi and Ewutu Senya East, there are different dynamics. In, in Yendi, we are told that the sitting member of parliament, and, and while this, the, the results were not declared by the EC, we are told that an official of the MPP in that constituency declared the results in favor of Farouk Aliu Mahama. But there was a standoff and there was some assault of a journalist, supposedly, by Farouk Aliu Mahama. Uh, what do you make of that situation? The same Farouk Aliou Mahama, we had seen, again, going back to the money in politics, we had seen uh, smart TV sets with his images and all of that. Let's deal with that incident first before we get into uh, Ewutu Senya East and Mavis Hawakumse. Well, um, I, I, I read and heard about that incident in the ND involving Farouk Aliou Mahama. Um, I'm told the person involved is a reporter for um, CTFM, CTTV. Um, from what I read, the matter um, has been reported to the police. We as an organization are yet to really verify, even though I have no doubt that the story um, is credible. And of course, if it is credible, I think we've gotten to a point where we need to really take drastic measures as a media community to ensure that our independence as guaranteed by the constitution is respected, our safety is guaranteed, and our rights are protected. I think over the course of you know, the last four or five years, the level of impunity for crimes against journalists has just been unimaginable. And it's basically a reflection of the level of impunity that is going on at, uh, in all sectors of society. Um, we, we have fantastic laws in the country, but these laws are never respected. They are only respected when it involves, you know, um, the poor person, um, the, the, the weed smoker, the plantain thief, and so on. But when big people commit crime, it's as if, you know, the laws don't work in their, in their, in their, in their case. Just imagine if it was Ali Muhammad, Farouk, Farouk Ali Muhammad who was slapped by a journalist or by someone else. By now, we would have been told that you know, the person is in detention, the person is to be present, uh, uh, taken to court today, and, and all of that. You know, we would have seen the law um, taking full effect. And, and I think it is also because sometimes we as journalists have failed to come together to collectively act. And that is why uh, we applaud the decision of the GJA, for example, in the case of Howard Kumsen. And I mean, once, once it is proven, that what is reported about Farouk, Farouk Ali Muhammad is true, I believe that the media community has to come together 
to take a drastic action against him and to make sure that the laws of our country uh, are respected. Otherwise, as they say, impunity begets impunity, and these things would continue. All right. So you've, you've established a few things. Before we move on to maybe Zahawa Kumsin, this is what Farouk Aliou Muhammad, the, the, the member of parliament of Yendi, had to say. He, he says it was the MP, well, this is what the, the journalist had to say, that it was the MP, Farouk Aliou Muhammad, who slapped me and his people kicked me and took my phone away. That is what the City FM journalist uh, had to say. Uh, also adding, I was reporting on the violence that was happening during the counting process. So I asked the MP why that was happening. And he got up and came and slapped me. And his people also started beating me up. So this is what the journalist has been sharing. And like you're saying, if we can substantiate this, then I guess the proper mechanisms, the long arms of the law should reach into that. But we also know that this is not the first time. There have been so many incidents of same, and oftentimes the reaction, you, you criticize us, the media, but even when we do our best in putting this out there, what, what comes of it? You, you know very well, nothing, practically nothing comes of it. So what then do you do? Well, I think that uh, you're right that in, in most cases, um, these, these matters are raised and literally nothing happens. Um, you, you, the, the reasons are quite numerous. And as I said before, I, I think that on, on some occasions, we can blame ourselves as, as journalists and folks in the media community uh, who sometimes may even drop the ball. Uh, we have had cases where we as an organization would be acting in support of a journalist, only to be told that the journalist himself or herself says that um, he or she is not interested in pursuing the case further. We have had cases where we go to the police and the police say, well, we also read this in the news, but the matter has not been reported to us. Just a few months ago, the Ministry of Information organized what was called the Accountability Forum, uh, for which I really commended the minister and, and, and his ministry for putting that together. It was essentially uh, meant to get the Ghana Police Service to appear before you know, um, the, the media stakeholders to brief us about where things stand in terms of investigations into various matters of crimes against journalists. And in their report, there were a number of instances where we thought these were cases that the police ought to investigate. But the police would say, well, these matters were never reported to us, and we cannot go out there uh, fishing for cases. And so some, in some instances, it is because we as journalists tend not to be interested in the cases. Imagine, for example, this journalist from City of and City TV who um, uh, is said to have been you know, abused. If we decide to take up this matter and the journalist says, oh, I'm not interested because uh, Farouk sent a delegation to come and appeal to me to drop the matter and so on and so forth. There is nothing we can do. We just have to... Um, um, accept whatever the journalist says. But that is the appeal that I am making, that until we begin to accept our rights, until we begin to take people on for the abuse of the law, we would not make progress. And indeed, if this turns out to be true, that Farouk indeed slapped or abused the journalist, that's a criminal offense. And we would be prepared to go all out to ensure that, you know, the matter is taken to court, prosecuted, the journalist's rights, you know, um, respected, and whatever decision the court then would arrive at. If the court says, well, it's okay for, because he's an MP, he can slap a journalist and go scot free. Well, let's get there and see. But the time when people feel that they are too big in this country must come to an end. We must ensure that when the law says that no one is above the law, indeed no one is above the law, not even the president. I believe that we should get to a point where the president, if the president is abusing the law, we take him on, even if he wouldn't listen, even if he is adamant, as we are witnessing in some of these cases. I think as citizens, we have not been angry enough, you know, in some of these matters. And so these are matters that we would fully pursue. We are keenly interested in them and would ensure that the right things are done. So long as the journalist would want their right to be asserted and would want to be supported in defending their rights. 
And of course, it becomes even more problematic because of the position he occupies. And again, some people would even look at the fact that he is the son of a former vice president. But let's cross over from Yendi into Ewutu Senya East. Uh, a member of parliament who is not new to having problems with, you know, close shaves with media people and her team supposedly uh, perpetrating assault. Now, in recent times, we heard of that Cape FM incident in the central region, on the back of which the GJA issued a statement saying that there should be a media blackout. No one should cover anything to do with Mavis Hawakumsen, the member of parliament for Ewutu Senya East. She has gone through, she has scaled the hurdle in her uh, primary, but now she is saying that she's taking the GJA um, leadership, the president or the body, to court, suing them and that they must come with proof or retract the statement they have made. But you, as the Media Foundation for West Africa, you have supported the GJA on this. On what basis did you support the GJA? Because she's saying there is no evidence uh, tying her to this assault or to her team. Well, um, I, I'm, I'm not surprised that the minister would take such an absurd position. Um, here is a case in which a journalist has been assaulted uh, during uh, an, an incident involving her Burton. The journalist says, this is what happened. I was invited. People said uh, they are suspecting that I'm the one who insulted this person on, on television. I told them I'm not. I showed them my car. And subsequently, they ambushed me and, and mercilessly beat me up. I would have been expecting the minister by now to be saying that, look, I, I only came to realize this after my vetting, and I have spoken to the, to the, to the journalist involved, rendered my sincere apologies to him, and I've assured him that, look, I will take all the appropriate steps to ensure that the persons involved are sanctioned, and in the event some cost has been incurred in terms of medical bills, I'm ready to support the journalist. But surprisingly, she comes out to, to be threatening a, a court or a legal action, and I don't know on what basis. The GJA is saying that, look, media houses should boycott everything related to her. And, and we have added in our support to the GJA that it shouldn't just be about her. So long as she remains the Minister for Fisheries, in fact, the Fisheries Ministry should not also be covered by the media as well. And, and I, I, really, I really marvel why she thinks that the, the whole thing about court is said that anything you can just simply say that I'll go to court. Is she going to court for what? Defamation? How is she defamed? The GJA has not said that she's the one who beat up the journalist. She said, they are saying that people affiliated to her and the people, the people subsequently made comments to suggest that indeed they, 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 they are affiliated with her. And so instead of being sober and, and, and doing what people would say, well, that is what is expected of a leader, she is now threatening an absurd court action. Well, we can only wish her well, um, she should go. We are fully in support of the GJA. And in fact, if, there, if, if she should go ahead with a, um, a court case, as, as General Mosquito once said, um, anyone can go to court, we, we would certainly be on the side of the GJA and will offer whatever support that the GJA is required. If they don't have the capacity to engage a legal person, we would be willing. To, to be on their side, to support them with the uh, lawyers to defend um, such, such, such a case, which, which I don't think would happen anyway. But let's see how it goes. Hold for me, Suleimana. I'll come back to this issue. But the man in the thick of things, Albert Jumfo, GJA president, is on the line with us. Mr. Jumfo, a very good morning to you. Good morning, Benjamin. How are you? I'm well. It's good to have you this morning. I'm sure you followed the conversation as far as the GJA and your blacklisting, maybe it's how it comes in, is concerned. She says, I don't think the GJA has conducted a thorough investigation into the matter before issuing the blacklist against me. She's calling for evidence of what you say her team uh, did, uh, barring which she will sue the GJA. Uh, do you have the evidence? <clears throat> Do you have any evidence that points to the fact that Mavis Hawakumsen or her team perpetrated this act to the Cape FM journalist? Okay, thank you, Akato, and then greetings to your able team members. 
and good morning to your cherished viewers. I I think that I don't know what uh, she meant by saying evidence. Uh, maybe she wants us to put our evidence out there so that she can also adduce evidence for court. And uh, if we are going to court, why don't you go to court? Why would you call for evidence? Uh, we, mm. are, we are we are we are we are ever ready if you want to test the law, the rule of law. That is that is a very good one. Uh, we expect every politician to be abided by the law and also to do civil uh, remedies in addressing such matters. So if it shows that uh, a right has been put upon, or maybe so the media has done anything illegal and you want to test the law, we are ready. We are ever prepared. So I don't think that we are we are we are prepared, we are intimidated, we are afraid, we are worried. <coughs> we are ever ready and prepared any politician who wants to attack journalists in this country. And I'll stand my head. Now, talking about evidence, I think we have said this in over and over. Again. What what is he saying? Is he trying to say that uh, she, she doesn't she doesn't know the people who assaulted uh, our our colleagues? Is that what he's trying to say? That's what we have we have enough evidence. Open evidence and and she's aware. I, I believe I just want to believe that whatever commentary she made. Uh, we well, just a uh, rhetoric or maybe political uh, statement. But when it comes to evidence, first of all, the very person, the guy, the supported police officer, who signaled, who signaled our police to meet him halfway and who questioned <coughs> him with a picture on his phone, we have a video of this police officer, of this reporter, let me put it, but we have a concern, uh, officer yet. But we have the deep of this supported police officer following our system on the uh, official run as a minister of history. So what is this mm. We have mm. we have we have mm. two two close fans, two close ladies, mm. who have been with her as we are told for over years, over ten to twenty years, this lady is there. We have pictures of this lady, they were the first people who approached our brother, our colleague, and then asked him, Are you Jacob. They confronted him and asked, are you Jacob? They, they, our colleague said, no, I'm not. They said, ah. Are you not the one who was on UTV insulting other people? So, so, is he saying that he's going to disassociate himself or delete himself from this uh, two women? We have the image. We have a, we have a, we have a picture of one, of one of the stars who actually assaulted our brother. Who has thought who hit our brother? We have a fake, we have we have no CD. So you will bring this on. We are ready. If if she wants to fight the fiction, the media, nobody, no single individual can fight the media in this country. Not even the past. Not to talk of uh, a casual MP. We are dead. This is this is this is a danger to court. And we'll meet we will meet her there, sorry. All right, so so if she's going to court, she should go. And you're saying she should take the matter to court. You, you meet her there. So, so you're standing by that, that, that stance. You're sticking I, to that position. I, I got, I got, we have said that this is the same woman whose ministry has issued a statement last week calling for it <clears throat> in, in, in some way. And, and, and uh, I've, made, I've, made some, I've made some proposals that they, they, they'll be meeting the day in the coming week to sit on the matter and get this same one, that was on Thursday or Friday, no, on Friday. Now, maybe after winning the election, I don't know whether he thought our, our pressure was to, was to uh, I don't know, maybe he thought we have an intent against her uh, in, the, in, the, in the quest uh, that is uh, run down to her election. So after winning the election, he thought that no, he felt of embodying. And now I'm promoting the official statement issued by her own ministry. Trying to say that, trying to, trying to arrange my people with the DJ. And now, this is traveling call. We, we, we are, we are, we are, it is surprised. But, but we love, we would love it if it goes to court. We would give blow to blow, blow to account of whatever happened. Proceeding, we are ready. We are the parents for the, of the media in Ghana. And nobody, not even the company, can eat data. We are prepared, our legal team prepared. Yesterday, I have a long meeting with our legal team. We are ready for our country. Our country will take the lead to court. We will meet them. It's interesting because at a point, she, when she spoke, she made mention of the fact that 
you, in some interaction with her, had promised that you would send her, uh, I, I don't know whether it was directly with her or said somewhere, but that you had said that you would send her evidence, a video or something of the sort, pointing to uh, this attack, the assault on the Cape FM journalist, and that you had not till when she was coming out with the statement. You hadn't been able to send it to her. But, but you do, you're saying you do have the evidence, right? Agabo, this is a palpable lie. This is a palpable lie. This is a woman, when she called, and the first person was supposed to her, she denied and died. This, this, this woman denied like that. You see, a reaction to our first question, in fact, in the, in the, in the, in the interaction, she had already taken what we call an exchange position, denying that a uh, team, this will say you were not there, you were not there when, the, you were when, the, when our colleague was being attacked. Why would you come up and deny the time? In fact, she wasn't ready to, uh, to cooperate. So we had to the look. We thought, I thought it, and I remember with it. I said, look, the media, as, as a media, as a journalist, we don't dwell on suspicion. Or we don't dwell on, uh, how do we call it, uh, um, there's something, I want, I, want to get, I want to get this word right. But then we, 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 we deal with facts, we deal with evidence. And you, does it know that we are still making A, B, C, D? Then, as soon as I said, I said, then if we have it, she doesn't, then she doesn't have it, she doesn't know. So, at the beginning of the conversation, she had, she had denied and she had, she had said that, first she said, have, have, we, have we cited a statement issued by a, a team? That was the first question she asked me. And I told her we are not dealing with a statement. We are dealing with her. So, so from the word go, because she wasn't ready, then later when I told her we have the proof, we have the, we have the, we have the visuals, we have the images, we have things to, we have the, the, the pictures and the visuals to prove that these people are members of a camp, of a team, and, and otherwise. Then she came and said, oh, then she will investigate and get back to us. Why would they go on air and say that we are going to get back to her? We called you to let you know that we have this information at hand. So why should we come back to you? I think we are pumping you. No. If you, say, if, you, if you claim, like all what we said, and in our press, we put it out there, that look, just produce the perpetrators of this attack. For the law to deal with them. Once you do that, the DJA has no problem, has no issue with you. Produce them. These are people around you. These are attacks around you. And we don't know who they are going to pour those venom on. So, uh, I got to. I don't, I, don't, I don't see why. I think she's just doing politics with it. We are not doing politics. We are not doing politics. We don't, DJ don't, does not dwell on assumption. We don't dwell on suspicion. This is, this is an establishment. Uh, uh, an association established under the laws of this country, the form of the constitution, gives us the, the independence, the freedom to do our work. Again, we also we are also empowered in the longest standing media body or association in this country from 1949 to now. It is not for an individual, and 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 we did not just uh, come out with this decision. We did an extensive engagement, an extensive, very extensive engagement. Which, which, including speaking to our partners. And I'm happy my good brother, Sulemana, is on the line. I remember when, when the issue of the one we tried to reach, he was in Senegal, Dakar. You see? So we spoke to all our partners. We spoke to the head of key media institutions, including multimedia. Right. We spoke to. So, we, so it is not, we did not just one up and say that we are coming out with this decision. So if he told that. Uh, uh, he has the law on his side. He should just go and test the law. And we are testing him. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jumfo, for joining the conversation. Uh, Albert Jumfo. Yes, and I got to, before I go online, let me first of all comment. Hmm. Uh, first of all, multimedia, you and other media, media houses who have actually headed to this call. And we, we, we are so much excited to say that uh, for the first time, even though uh, there has been some. You know, there are always, uh, how do we call it, uh, um, um, some media houses who, who, who may, uh, uh, you know, we knew that we may, we may, we may violate the, the call. It wasn't an order, it was a call. So a call means that uh, this is in our own collective interest. 
we are not, nobody is under any obligation or any obligation to adhere to it. But for our collective interest and for our safety, we call. And so far as I'm concerned, so far I can say that uh, the support has been normal. And let me thank our brother, Suleimana, who was out of town. And I know that as soon as he arrived, we have also uh, grown their, their support uh, behind this decision. But to end, some others who have violated it. And let me give an example. An example is CC. CC is Right. The city violated this order. And let me tell you, at this call, let me, let me correct myself, this call. And you know, at the time they, they made, they observed their platform uh, for our country, or to publish our country's story. At the same time, their reporter or correspondent in Yenji was being busy, was being attacked. What he's been talking about. That the safety of Germany is a collective responsibility. That let all help, let all come together and stop this manner. Because you may think that today it is David Kobler. Today you may think maybe you are doing GJ. You don't know tomorrow. You know maybe maybe Suleiman, maybe uh, I'm a commercial for the Takashi. Nobody knows. So what we are doing, we want to create an enabling environment for our people's work, not a price of or an environment pollute a pollute. A political a contaminated environment. So our call is that our members, that's all he Listen, this is how these people will get to know right. that the media is very important. They need us more than we need them. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, Albert Jum, for, for joining the conversation. He is president of the Ghana Journalists Association. Thank you very much, Suleimana Braima, for joining the conversation. He's executive director, Media Foundation for West Africa. Let's cross over now and uh, get some further details, some thoughts briefly on the parliamentary primaries of the MPP on Saturday. Joining the conversation, he is a political scientist and director of the Center for European Studies at the University of Ghana, Dr. Kwame Asasante. Good morning, Doc. Good morning, Ben. How are you, my brother? Uh, I could be better, but we thank God for life. Uh, what do you make to start off the conversation of the parliamentary primaries of the MPP in its entirety? I mean, I'd like you to summarize, but the good, the bad, and the ugly, even before we get into who has lost and who has been retained? Uh, the good. I'll start with the good. The good is that um, there was a lot of preparation uh, that manifested itself in terms of the way the election went, uh, with a few hiccups, with the exception of a few hiccups. Uh, the election went by and large were peaceful and uh, free and fair. And uh, it tells you that the MPP put in their all to get this type of result. The bad, we also heard of issue of monetization and its effects, uh, which Ghanaian political actors have been hypocritical about. Uh, they are not ready to deal with this. Uh, I don't know how we are going to fix this problem, uh, but I think that uh, what we can do as a society is to make sure that whoever wants to influence us with money <coughs> We chase those people out by voting against them. Otherwise, a time will come. Our needs will be ignored by the very people who want them to lead us. Because if we can buy their way into parliament, into a presidency or positions of authority, then I'm afraid uh, your needs will not be counted at all in the eyes of those politicians. Uh, the ugly is what we saw, uh, the very ugly spectacle in uh, Yenji, where uh, two uh, candidates uh, declaring themselves as winners and all that. It's unfortunate. Uh, I believe that uh, the, the party constitution and other <laughs> mechanisms are in place to fix this problem uh, once and for all. It doesn't work well uh, for uh, a party such as MPP. Now, speaking about those, money in our politics, you mentioned Yendi. And apart from the assault on a journalist, which purportedly, per the City FM uh, journalist, was perpetrated by the man himself, the MP, Farouk Aliou Mahama. The, the journalist insists that it was Farouk Aliou Mahama uh, who assaulted this person. And, of course, also some members of the team of Farouk. And, and then 
there was that uh, incident with the ballot papers being shredded and all of that. Uh, the EC did not declare, but a, a member of the constituency executive of the MPP went ahead to declare the elections. Um, what, what do you make of those developments? And, and then you can add the fact I was talking about in the beginning. Money, yeah. uh, the, the TV sets branded with people's images and all of that. That is very unfortunate to have uh, that type of experience in elections such as what intra-party elections, a contest within uh, the same Volcar party, like that uh, people will not understand themselves and they will not do what is expected of them. And at the end of the day, uh, they are virtually uh, in blows and all that. It's very, very unfortunate because democracy affords these type of behavior. Uh, so I was expecting something better than what we saw. Um, it's very, very unfortunate. All that happened was nothing but what a sorry story on that day. Uh, we believe that uh, we will not have a repeat of this uh, come 2024, December 7th election. Um, uh, that is my hope. Uh, and it tells you that the party has a lot of homework to do. And uh, EC e also um, should be able to take a cue from this and uh, make sure that uh, all the, the, the necessary uh, uh, education that they need to get from this will be able to what, add it to what they have in order to what, uh, ensure a very peaceful and successful election. Mm. For issue of monetization, um, it's, it's, it's a serious matter. It's a serious matter. And uh, Ben, you have I, I guess I guess with each primary or election, we just see how much worse it is becoming, don't we? Oh yes, yes. But we as a society, our problem is that we have acquired to this for a very long time. Yes, once uh, they deny you what they promise you. Uh, knowing very well that you use that against them, then they come to you uh, during election and then pay you off. Then you are silent. If we continue to maintain uh, this state of affair, a time will come, campaign will be relevant. Issues will not be discussed. All that you need is to go and do a lot of money to vote. And at the end of the day, you will smile. Uh, is that what we are beginning for as a society? who really want to maintain this democracy by hook or by crook. I'm not sure that is what we have been for us. So all meaningful members of the society, including the voters themselves, we should be alert and chase away anybody who comes in there to influence us with uh, money and other material things. Uh, it means that we are taking you for granted and that what is of interest to you is none of Yes, mm. uh, there's also that incident, uh, right before we, we get into other matters briefly, there's also that incident of Mavis Hawa Kumsin and the GJ calling for a blackout of anything related to her, an assault on a Cape FM journalist, supposedly by some members of her team. She says she's suing the GJ. I just spoke to the GJ boss who says she should go ahead to court and they'll follow her, that they have the evidence. Uh, uh, more to talk about there. Any, any quick reactions? Uh, I've not followed the story, so I'll not be able to comment. I, I'm just hearing for the first time. I want to have two details to be able to digest mm. and then mm. discuss them. Probably All right. F fair is fair on that. So let's take a quick look at those who gained and those who lost in the last uh, parliamentary primaries. Adansi Sokwa, KT Hammond retained. Francis Hassan Subwachi retained in Bantama faced stiff opposition from Raphael Ejapong, Kennedy Ejapong's brother, and there was, of course, the threat in the antecedents to that contest. Um, in Wejagbawe, Tina Mensan lost to Jerry Ahmed. Uh, it was quite a landslide, uh, surprising. Frida Prempe uh, ceded her position to Dr. Gideon Boakon. Uh, there's also, interestingly, um, Anya Soutuom, uh, Dr. Adomako Kisi losing his slot. There were so many of them. Um, wh what is your reading of what happened? And the 28, interestingly, 28 big wigs within the MPP, incumbents with, uh, you know, positions, ministerial positions here and there, who lost. What's your reaction? Oh, it is normal. 
It is normal. I was not expecting something different from this. It's a true reflection of what I had uh, in my mind, that non-performing uh, MPs um, should be kicked out. And this is exactly uh, what the voters did, by maintaining those who are, in their view, performing, and those who have the potential to come and inject some energy into the political system. Uh, so by and large, I was not surprised at all. Uh, all those who were kicked out, uh, the people uh, in their constituency believed that uh, the, the time had come for them to remove them and give way to those who can really serve their interests. Uh, these things happen all the time. Uh, so you can be a big boy. Uh, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that you, the part, the constituents, are the people who decide. So uh, sometimes it doesn't uh, matter so much about the way you want to induce them and all that. When they decide, they decide. Uh, so for me, uh, it's, it's, it's a good thing because we are going to get people, uh, fresh people, into the system uh, to change the game uh, for the party, if that is the intention of uh, the, the party. And then we are also going to get people uh, learning uh, from this uh, political curve that, look, if I don't sit up and perform, a time will come my people will not endorse my candidature and the rest of them. Uh, so for me, it's a good uh, learning curve uh, for uh, both the party and the constituents. I, I guess we'll have more time to elaborate on some of these individuals uh, moving forward, especially as I'm going to be hosting you in the course of the week as well for the news review. But thank you so much, Dr. Kwame Asasanti. I'm grateful, Ben. I wish you a good day. Thank you. I wish you the same. That is Dr. Kwame Asasanti, a political scientist and director of the Center for European Studies at the University of Ghana. We're taking a breather. When we return, the concerned members of the National Association of Institutional Suppliers uh, are asking government to pay up their arrears. How long has this been on the table? What are they looking forward to? We have that conversation up next on the AM Show.